Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and I have just had a catastrophic recording error. I don't know what happened, but whilst I was recording the intro for this very episode, uh, it, it all got super echoey. Yeah, it's weird, it's weird. So uh, I've, I've unfortunately gone ahead and already placed down the stuff for what we are doing today. We are indeed attacking the power situation. Last time we had tremendous issues making making sure everything stayed powered up and kept on running. Right now, we are solely relying on this girl, Franklin, to go around and provide the power via the hamster wheel. So I feel like with our food supply being hatches, we can totally go ahead and make ourselves a coal, uh, coal power plant here. Of course, coal generators, they come with some side effects, and if I bring up the coal generator here, we can see that one of the major ones is carbon dioxide. It releases 20 grams per a second, and there are various ways of dealing with that, but for our very early setup here, I've gone with the carbon skimmer. Into the carbon skimmer over this way, we can see that it can uh, deal with 300 grams per second. That is a lot. That's like 30 of them or something like that. That's, that's, that's many, many uh, coal generators that can be done, and I only want three to get going with. Uh, another consideration that we have to do, and the reason that I am leading this wire down the very back of my base here, is that heavy watt wire comes with quite severe decor punishments. Uh, I'm already having a pretty bad time uh, with wire and debris and industrial equipment being just everywhere. I mean, like, look at the, these red colours everywhere. This is that bad, and this can make people sad. It's not a problem at the moment, but it is a problem that I want to head off, especially as heavy watt wire is quite the issue. So I'm going to be running this down this way and maybe creating some little substations we have access to access to power transformers over here uh, and these can jump the uh, the power down and separate se uh, separate circuits from each other because of course there are maximums that we have to uh, keep within this was giving us troubles last time. If we come back and have a look at this wire over here, you can see that we have got damage overloading. As you can see, red lines coming down. Uh, and that is because we have far too much power onto this little line here. Uh, to try and aid that, we're going to be trying to make some conductive wire out of copper uh, and up the, uh, up the rating of this little strip of wire here. But copper's expensive at the moment, and I don't want to be doing that everywhere, so we're going to try and run stuff off of regular wire. I think this pump down here might be one of the first things that I want to try and uh, de the hamster wheel get off get off of this system and on to a much better one so i'm gonna i'm gonna build something along here like this i also want to get the power transformer that i was talking about you can see that it connects up to the uh the heavy watt wire nicely and then you can run a uh, wire down the bottom in fact i do believe if i get the wire bridge i can also jump over that not that i want to this time but if i wanted to this could make a nice compact little system i actually want to go this way the substation is going to look something like this. You've got a transformer, you have a battery, and you have a wire going off to where you need. It's, it's a simple setup, but an effective one. Okay, now that this system is built, let's explain what's going on here, shall we? Over on the end of this corridor, we've got a whole bunch of hatches. Hatches, if you don't know, eat... Ooh, we got some research, nice. Uh, eat a whole bunch of stuff and output this little rock here. That's right, it, a little bit of coal. Unfortunately, the hatches keep going across it and I can't actually click on the coal. Ah, there's about mathic rock there. There we go, coal. Right, brilliant. But we've got nearly two tons of coal just in that one little spot there and they've been dropping coal all back and forth here. So, if I come over towards my, my generation station, here. Uh, I am going to set this guy on consumable ore and coal and then turn it all the way up. I know, I turn everything all the way up. I really should learn to control myself. But I want this to be very, very important so that uh, Plank, when he's finished doing whatever it is he thinks is more important, uh, farming. Okay, I didn't know farming was so important. Supply. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, he's got both storing and supply. I wonder if I put storing up he'll still continue to do research. I don't know. Let's let's set a research and find out. Uh, a, a quick word on research. This system that give, gives us a whole bunch of oxygen keeps trying to stall out because of the amount of hydrogen we've got backing up in the system because every time the, uh, the battery gets full, uh, it can't uh, run anymore because I've got a little bit of uh, automation going there. Uh, so keeping a little bit of research ticking over at all times is actually doing us quite well on keeping the oxygen flowing as well. That said, I feel like everything's kind of jammed up for the moment. Okay, that's not the worst that could happen, but uh, I suppose that's what you get 
when you've got a hot polluted oxygen vent spewing out oh this this needs hooking up oh this this really needs hooking up to a power system let's let's do that quickly together shall we i was about to end this little segment but let's let's go one of those uh, a little bit of wire across the bottom and then i'd really like some some smart batteries but for now i'll just put three of those down uh, and then we want to connect it up to the actual power oh daytime uh, nighttime's been cooled uh, thankfully we've got loads of copper wire so that's not not a problem and then we'll leave that there as a backup in case that's needed okay this is we could also probably make sure this gets done pretty quickly but for now i think we're doing good ah this is this is not good though this is not good i need to move the uh transformer in one move that in one put down an extra heavy watt wire okay beautiful tiles across what recess did we actually get? Ah, portable gases, canisters, and oxygen mask. That's that's the important thing there. Uh, if I come in and have a look, I suppose I could have shown you on the bill. That's some oxygen masks, and there's an oxygen dock station. Uh, so if I was able to get up to a vacuum station, uh, we could we could use that as a vacuum area. Sorry, we could use the uh, the oxygen masks instead. Uh, and if you didn't know, I was using these ladders to allow all of the ice that we had uh, through here to to drop down into the the biome underneath so now that that's done i think i'm gonna go ahead and uh put down a whole load of granite do i want to do insulated tile it looks like i wanted to do an insulated tile let's do that to keep the cold out this this is gonna eventually start warming up here there look, look, look at all this up here uh yeah we, we could do with that cooling down is it is it starting to fight it's starting to fight the, the the battle is on who will win the cold or the warm uh i'm looking around given that there is a a uh, bunch of abyssalite here. I think the cold's going to win. I think I think there's just more cold going on. We we could change that though. We could definitely change that. So one of the horrific side effects from burning all this coal is of course a lot of carbon and the way to get rid of the carbon as I've said earlier is the carbon skimmer. Unfortunately we do need, oh press the right button, we do need a bunch of water to be put into there. I've already gone ahead and made this line coming up from our uh, pump down the bottom here. Looks like we're about to run out of that though. Uh, let's try and get another line put in place. It's alright, we, all we need to do is turn a battery over to get some more so that's not the biggest problem. Uh, the biggest problem of course is downtime. You can't can't tell it on the uh, temperature overlay here but these guys nine degrees eight degrees we we could be planting some seeds here soon we only need to go up to 10 okay we've got some water coming into the system here of course this guy needs a bunch of sand to be delivered it's not there at the moment we've got coal being put in here maybe we could also get some sand being delivered here that possibly wouldn't Ooh, oh 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 ceiling collapse entombed i think we're gonna be okay oh she is proper buried um we, we can't really see it unfortunately if i um do this let's let's let these guys dig her out there's a shame that we can't see the sand i think it might be because of the uh be because of the build order there maybe oh she popped out okay that's great let's just let's just let them finish that bit off shall we okay yeah sand is now being delivered turns out we didn't really need to there's sand all over the floor okay that that's fine <laughs> Okay, with the smart battery in place, we now have a control system. For those of you who are not aware, the smart battery, when it drops below this low threshold, will output this green signal. This tells all of the coal generators that, yes, go ahead, burn some coal, destroy the environment, make all, all the CO2 you can. Uh, but then when it gets up to the 90%, it will then turn this signal red, telling them to stop. Power will get used through the system, the, drain, the, the battery will drain, it will drop back down to the low, send the green again, bam, and the cycle continues uh night time's just been called but i really i really want some some power to be delivered okay franklin coming in with the coal i'm gonna turn i'm just gonna put it onto a nine for now why not let's 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 set everything onto a nine uh the power flows from the generator into the battery there's nowhere for it to go right now so the battery is charging beautiful at quite a rate as well we're almost halfway through its charge cycle as we speak and barely even got through any of the coal that we put in there that that's pretty cool that's that's actually really good as you can see we are burning through i wonder how much got put in because that green bar doesn't look like it's moved at all unlike the green bar on the battery here which should be going all the way up to fully charged very soon boom 
Okay, nice. That, that, that's a fully working generator system here. We will need to up the priorities on most of these to try and get Franklin turning stuff over. I, I've, I've got a fear it's going to be like 9, 8, and then 7, so that as things uh, are needed more, then she'll go up there more. Okay, next thing. Whew, we've, got a, we've, got, we've got a power generator, but now, now we need to start building the substations and start pulling the power out. And, of course, getting this major, major power spline going around the system. There are definitely temperatures coming out of this uh, polluted oxygen vent. It is warming up the area around something something pretty nicely, actually. There's a bunch of ice on the floor, and the polluted ice, because it melts first, or at a lower temperature, it melts first. Let's have a look. Minus 20 it will melt at, and, and yeah, this is very warm compared to that around here. Okay, as these batteries come online and power starts to drain out of the smart battery, I want to watch this whole thing power up. The plank has been running back and forth like I have really hoped he would. Why is sucrose being selected there? Putting the coal in the place, uh, in the storage bin from our uh, ranches over here. Uh, so now that we're drained, yes, this is firing up. Beautiful. Now the question is, when we get down to, let's let's turn that up to, I don't know, let's say uh, 90%. When we get down to 90%, uh, is, is an errand going to be uh, put up here? And is Franklin going to be getting to it soon enough with all her other jobs? That is that is a very important question right there. Uh, I, I don't know where 90% is though this is this is a big problem the hard part here is i just have no idea what the top level of fuel was i feel like we've we burnt more than 10 percent of the fuel but i don't know maybe not <laughs> Okay, we had a small issue. Ooh, we've still got a small issue of things uh, getting cold in pipes. I suppose, really, I should have not made the floor out of obsidian, but this is the situation we are dealing with. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we'd get a little bit more heat coming out of the coal generator, but that, that's not happened. Okay, so maybe, maybe we need to deal with this at some point. Well, I mean, we've got minus two. That's not too bad. It's minus three is the point it changes, and that's, that's 2.9. We could, we could do with this being a little bit warmer. The coal generator's warming up. I've gone from minus 1.3 to minus 1.2, and indeed 1.1. Hmm. Yeah, this might be fine. So one of the big problems I'm going to have with running this line of heavy wire down the edge here is, of course, there is water going to be melting all the way through here. And I don't want it down here in this corner. I want it here in this. So I'm going to put in a little bit of a heavy watt join plate here to provide a barrier. I might not even end up digging down this. Well, I, I do need to put the wires in, but I'll uh, see if I can't, like... I can't fill it in. There must be something I could do, but I'm probably going to have to end up skimming this off along this line and then maybe along this line as well, just to let everything flow in there. Whilst we're watching Kiri go around and constructing the backbone of my electrical system, I would like to take this moment right here to stop and thank the backbone of this channel. Yes, indeed. Scrolling up the screen right now, you will see a list of names, a list of names of people that have taken the time out of their day and the money out of their wallet to support this channel going forward into the future. These are the people that take enough entertainment from what I'm doing here to want this channel to continue to exist. And indeed, this monetary situation that they are giving me here is applying the pressure, giving me one more plate to spin and making sure that I can take the time out of my week to make sure these videos get produced. So if you're enjoying this entertainment as much as I'm enjoying producing this entertainment, perhaps you'd like to join me right now going down into the comments and saying thank you to every single one of these people. It really does mean so much to have your support, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, with the majority of this heavy watt wire spline now in place, we need to turn our attention to the various power networks we have going around. I'm almost... I was about to say I'm almost certain we could leave this one going, but I don't... I'm, what, what's going on here? Why have we run out of hydrogen? What What has happened? Yeah, it's not like it can't pick it up. Okay, I think, I think what's happened is we have run out of power because we were trying to uh, well I tell you what I've done I've upgraded the power line on this one this particular line you can see it's all made out of conductive wire as opposed to this like spindly stranded wire here this means it can take up to two kilowatts of power uh, we've got two and two kilowatts and 50 on here thankfully people aren't going to be using either both the grill and the micro musher or they either of the two um, uh, two researchers here at the same time. So I, th I think we're going to be fine. Even though it did just show a red line at me, I think that was more it running out of power. If we just watch everything happen here, we are draining oxygen out of the system. This will eventually get us to the point where we can start producing more uh, from the electrolyzers, which is uh, which is indeed what's happening. This then gets overpressured again, and that allows us to start making power via the wonder of the hydrogen generator, which should be fine. I mean, we'll just we'll turn Rutherford back off of high priority here and just 
see how it runs out. All right, so uh, aside from that, we need to figure out what we're doing with some of these power networks. This is a nice one that can almost, I, I thought it could turn itself over. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what's going on there. We'll, uh, yeah, make, make sure it doesn't completely die on us. But this one here, this could definitely have a, a wire dropped down this way and uh, joined onto the system. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring this down to here. In fact, we can't do that because we've got a whole bunch of neutronium here. At some point, I'm going to want to come in and try and build across this way. I, I don't think I can get this central wire here. Maybe we're even going to have to end up destroying this particular tile to be able to get down. Maybe we'll like end up building two walls and get the water out of there. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do, uh, but we will indeed have to try and get this power running up this way, as I was just saying. So power transformer, let's grab that. I'm just going to pop this over here. We're going to get a nice jumbo battery because it's the nice cheap way of powering everything. Uh, it does come with a little bit extra losses when compared to the smart battery. If we have a look at the smart battery, we have got power leak 400 joules per cycle, whereas if we go to the jumbo battery, its power leak is two kilojoules per cycle. That that's a lot. That's uh, that's that's over five times more. But actual copper is precious, so I'm just going to use the copper ore that we have lying around all over the map. Another thing that I want to do is we've got a little bit of a, a, a gas flow issue over here. You can see that over this side, we've got polluted oxygen, we've got carbon dioxide, we've got problems going on. We pulled down the algae terrarium, so there's nothing uh, dealing with the carbon dioxide, and I want to change that. Uh, let's let's start with that first. If I come down to the seeds, uh, in here we've got something called an oxy fern seed. That's brilliant. I would like to grab that. Over here, at the top of the list, which I keep clicking past, we've got an oxy fern. I'm going to say to sweep that, and then I'm going to come in here and uh, turn it off of this. So now, it, someone should come along, grab this oxy fern, and put it down here. The other thing I want to do is come into this little critter drop-off that I've got at the top of the, uh, the little section here and try and find a pip. Beautiful. Over here, we've got some old pips. There are a bunch of pip squeaks about, but there are also two old pips. You can see this guy's 88 and this one over here. He's also 88. I'm going to wrangle this guy up and then slowly over time, someone should come along, truss him up, and then deliver him over this way. Th these are two things I want to happen pretty quickly if possible. Okay, rather than coming along to do the job of trussing this guy up, it <laughs> turns out the pip wanted to move, but no, we are not allowing that. Okay, so now that we've got him captured, what's Rutherford going to do? It says ranch supply. What if I move you over here and then turn the priority of this guy all the way up? Where, where's Rutherford on this? Five? Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, no, it only took a little little time for everything to update. We're relocating the creature. Beautiful. Picked up that pip, and let's get that moving. Of course, Rutherford's going to take a little bit of time to move over there. The next thing I want to know is who's going to move this seed from here. It's not sweep only, even though it technically should be. I'm just going to get someone doing it pretty fast. All right, Franklin, off you go. Pick up the seed and deliver it to the placement over here. We've also got the pip down. All right, beautiful. This should mean now, because I've got an automatic dispenser here, we've got a ladder in the next slot there's no available uh, natural tiles at the top so there's only one spot this uh, this oxy fern can be planted and that's on this right hand tile here uh, I don't know whether we need to move the hatch or not Let's wrangle it. Let's find out. Genuinely unsure of how ooh, ooh, how long this is going to take. Okay, oxy fern seed is going down. More importantly, we didn't have to wrangle the hatch. Okay, let's do that. Oh, look, there, there it goes. It's up. It's using carbon dioxide. I don't know how much is in here. We've mostly got polluted oxygen that needs to be dealt with. So maybe the next thing I want to do uh, is to rip down this automatic dispenser and put a deodorizer. <coughs> excuse me, a deodorizer in its place. Maybe drag a little bit of wire off of here. What have we what have we got? Three hundred and ninety on there is the maximum. I, I think we can do that i think we can pull this across and like that okay with this power part substation of the network in place i think we can start getting rid of some of these other quite nasty looking buildings around here like we, we don't need the ooh, what, what have i said that i want to destroy here hold up i don't don't want to get rid of that water system that's for sure but i do want to get rid of the battery i do want to get rid of the wire and i definitely franklin why why are you there i was about to say and now that we've done things like this franklin doesn't have to go around and do the man manual generator anymore but why, why is she here why is she doing exactly the thing let's move on and see if we can't get a different uh uh, set of responses out of her. Okay, harvesting millwood. That's not quite what I expected you to be doing, but okay. Well, it's not quite the set of jobs I was expecting, but I think the main takeaway we can take from this is there's not many of the generate powers in there, so that that's good. We freed up Franklin to go around and do the other operating jobs on the uh, on the asteroid here, which granted at the moment is pretty much just the rock crusher. 
Also delivering uh, sand to the deodorizers. That's good. That, that's, a, that's a very important job. All right, Cure going around taking down the old archaic pieces of equipment here. I just don't think we're going to need to be able to uh, to run a backup at any point on this. If we, if we need the backup, something's gone very wrong up here. It's time to recognize and call out my mistakes there. We just keep running out of power in the smart battery over here. I don't know if that's because the uh, oxygen isn't getting th uh, thrown out enough or whether we're not turning off enough hydrogen there. There is problems that we can't keep up with here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to disconnect, in fact deconstruct, this bunch of wires here to get it off of the uh, the... the refrigerator loop here and we're gonna change it all back to ordinary wire like this yes like like so we're then gonna make a line of wire going up round over the top all the way around here and it's gonna come and join onto this section here that's uh, just a, a standard substation with a bit of a more uh, extensive line <laughs> Hmm, so we've got polluted oxygen being turned into oxygen here, but I think what's happening is that this is a very small amount of oxygen compared to how much polluted oxygen is around. This goes over one of the polluted oxygen bottles. The bo bottle goes, ah, I am under pressure, I can outgas, and then overwrites the polluted oxygen. Is that what's going on here? I don't know exactly, but it is what seems to be happening. Can we make this better with another uh, deodorizer? I sure do hope so. Let's put these at a nine so they get built. So placing down the second deodorizer has had some effect. I'm not sure if it's the effect we were after. We're still getting oxygen being overwritten down here and carbon dioxide's coming down to get converted into oxygen, which is also getting overwritten. So, I mean, maybe we're doing good, maybe we're not. What do you mean, crit of starvation? Ah, well, I mean, like, the guys in here are supposed to starve. I suppose that's fine. I mean, there's a lot of polluted oxygen. I do wonder how long it's going to take us to clean it all up. A while. A, a little while. I think with the addition of the power plant over here, we're getting to the point where this base is nice and self-sustaining. This is like 1.8 kilowatts of power on demand as it needs. Uh, we seem to have uh, freed Franklin up of her toil. Where, where, where's she gone? She's normally around here somewhere. We freed her of her toil anyway, and she's now free to go around and do all the other jobs that are needed to do, thus in uh, increasing the efficiency of our base. Uh, and all in all, I think we're getting very close to being able to get metals underway. We need, of course, steel so that we can start dealing with the magma at the top here. We need to be able to cool this stuff down. This will give us enough uh, igneous rock to carry on feeding to the hatches to be able to t keep this ticking over for a long, long time. But I think with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time where, as I say, I think we're going to start looking towards refinement of metals. There is a, a steel making process to be followed, and I really need to get some steel so we can start dealing with the incredible heats around here. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.